I rise like the sun sometimes, but then I fall. Like a black moon, I rise when the night falls. When the night falls, the mic calls. So listen, it's the ultraviolet ways to keep me rising on the mission. What up, all my exceed the hype beast? Welcome back. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button because you never know when your team breakdown is gonna drop. All right, long gone are the days when the legendary Steve Nash conducted the Phoenix Suns Express with an exquisite balance of precision and flair. The two time MVP, while not known for his defense, led this Phoenix Suns team to deep playoff run after deep playoff run after deep playoff run. Since Steve Nash left and also his protege Drogic, there has been a gaping hole at the point guard position in Phoenix. A hole that they have tried to fill over the years with players like Eric Bledsoe, Alfred Payton, Tyler Eulis, Brandon Knight, Ish Smith, who I like very much by the way, and now a player like Ellie Okobo from France. While I'm sure Ellie will do just fine, it is doubtful that he will be what the Phoenix Suns need as a point guard considering the serious talent that they are collecting in Phoenix. Let's talk about DeAndre Ayton for a second. His development as a big man is dependent on point guard play. Phoenix also has a wing duo in Booker and Jackson that has a lot of potential. With Booker already showing that he has what it takes to be a great scorer in this league, and Jackson still showing that he could turn into a very athletic 3 and D guy. The future could be bright for the Phoenix Suns if they can find their point guard of the future. There are three point guards that in my opinion the Phoenix Suns could realistically get and could elevate them into that team that may become something in the future. Right now, I just feel like they're in a purgatory situation where they're getting young players, but you don't see any real improvement. They're the poorest team in the NBA every year. But there are three point guards that I feel like can turn them onto the right direction. The first guard is Markel Fultz. Now, I know, Markel Fultz is not the perfect choice. But in my opinion, he has the highest reward. He's still a relatively unknown talent in the NBA. And what I mean by that is, we've seen him stink it up really horribly to where you wonder, can this guy even play? And we've seen him play well, where you start to think, well, maybe he might be able to figure this thing out. We've seen him fill stat sheets. There was the situation in his rookie year when he had the triple-double towards the end of the year, where they benched Ben Simmons in the second half. He still has potential, and he could still be a star. He also has experience as a starting point guard on a winning team. Now, he has injuries on with his shoulder and his wrist, and there's possibly something going on upstairs with but if I'm Phoenix Suns, I'm giving it a try. Now, what would it take to get Markel Fultz? Well, he makes about $8 million a year, which is very high considering what he's shown us, you know, his talent level is so far. You could come up with a package with Troy Daniels, who's averaging like four points on 10 minutes in 10 minutes a game, shooting 38% from three this year. And somebody like a Michael Bridges, if you aren't sold on his potential, or if you feel like you have too much depth at the small four position, Michael Bridges is averaging six points, 6.8 points per game. He's only playing like 21 minutes a game. A package like that, I feel like Philly would pull the trigger considering also Michael Bridges is from Philly and his mom works with the organization. They may be able to pull the trigger. If Phoenix is not willing to give up somebody like Michael Bridges, you can come up with somebody else who makes about $3 million and put that package together to get Mark Helfoltz. But I definitely think this is something Phoenix should look into. Let's look at option number two, Terry Rozier. Scary Terry is a very good NBA point guard. He isn't a star level player, but he's very solid. He can score and he's an above average playmaker. He's also a good defender as well. He would be somebody who would bring major stability to the point guard position in Phoenix. He would facilitate the development of the young players, much like he has done and is doing in Boston with the development of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, especially in the playoffs last year. Terry Rozier makes about the same amount of money as Michael Bridges. If they were interested in that swap, they could do that. They could also find somebody other than Michael Bridges to trade, but that's a relatively easy trade to make if they can find the talent. Let's talk about the third choice, Spencer DeWindy. Now, this is an interesting one. Spencer, he's a 6'6 point guard who is very valuable and very productive for the Brooklyn Nets. 
he's averaging about 15 points in about 28 minutes per game with about almost five assists per game. The problem is he's only playing 28 minutes a game because he's sharing the point card duties with D'Angelo Russell, a guard who happens to be a little bit better than him. This is why, this is the only reason why I feel like the Nets would even be willing to hear a trade uh, concerning Spencer Diddy is so they can try to get talent to bolster the rest of their roster to improve their team. Now, Spencer DeWindy is an interesting trade to make. He's one of those rare players where his productivity is much, much higher than his pay grade. So this trade would likely require a third team to get involved, considering Spencer DeWindy makes about $1.6 million. And I feel like his talent would require a good player back. And those good players usually make a lot more money than that. So that would be interesting. They would need a third team likely. But he's also somebody who I feel like would be really, really good for the Phoenix Suns. But yeah, you guys out there, let me know in the comments section below who should the Phoenix Suns go after to fill their point guard positions. Remember, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.